There are three very specific things that I learned recording this episode with my buddies. Uh, the first being mob mentality is a motherfucker. The second one uh, would be that the the Japanese of the early 1930s were monsters. Like Jesus Christ, man. And last but not least, number three. We're all going to help us. Here comes the sugar. Sugar. Adams out there in make them up imaginary land because why on earth would anyone ever associate themselves with the likes of me James hi yeah that's right hi da, 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 da. and man on the phone on the street Mr. Borealis that's not his last name at all. <laughs> it's not even close really yeah it is it's like beer I mean no. beer Birkus? No. It wasn't unflattering. It wasn't on. I mean, it was unflattering. What did I originally Um, call him? What did you originally call him? Yeah, yeah. Like just now? Yeah, yeah. Mr. Borealis? Yeah, that's right. Like uh, the guy from Firefly? I have not watched Firefly. It's a big regret of mine. I have not had a way to watch it. Wow, that's not what I was It has not been on any streaming service or anything. No, that's Nathan Fillion. You're Nathan Fillion. Am I? Yeah. Holy fuck, what am I doing here? What's up, guys? Surprise guest today, Nathan Fillion. Welcome to the studio. Hey, guys, I'm Nathan Fillion. <laughs> Let's do some podcasting. <laughs> Great Why to have you, you guys Nathan. get a studio? God damn oh, it. Uh, the world is our studio, Christopher. Mm-hmm. Uh, the world is our studio. <laughs> and our and, toilet. And also our bathroom, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, welcome to oh. another... Okay, for real, everybody, um, this episode is right around uh, 90% like horrifying violent rape so if that is something that you think that you could live without uh, you're not going to hurt my feelings if you skip this episode you will hurt James's feelings but nobody gives a shit about that honestly I kind of want to skip this episode I do too uh, I, the I, rape really, thing kinda I am really regretting the subject but it, it needs to be talked about but I, at the same time uh Fuck, man, I didn't have anything else either. No, it is a good topic. It's just, it's, it's a little rough, guys. Episode it's... of See No, Hear No, Speak No. <laughs> <laughs> the UFOs, the conspiracies, apparently, uh, <clears throat> hardcore, awful surprise sex, and uh, possibly some lighters? I don't really know what we're talking about exactly, mm. but um, that was a, quite a disclaimer. Yeah. And I'm James. And he's James. Don't and forget to email us at see no hear no speak no pod one or right. <laughs> at, at gmail at gmail.com or s n h n s n p o d at gmail dot com. That's right, everybody. Listen to him. He's the kid, and he knows what the kids like. Mm-hmm. And the kids like emailing us, and then. Uh, or comment on Podbean. That's com- a lot easier. Comment whenever. Hey man, just do what you want to do in your life because we're not your parents unless we are. And then I'm sorry that we've never met. Maybe one day. But the important I, thing here. I was going to say, I think the kids like comments. The kids don't check their fucking emails. I don't think the kids That's like for, anything really, except for like stale ass adults. Like, like what? Are, what are you doing? <laughs> James has proven to me that he's listened to an episode of the show by playing it on his phone in the background while we recording. I was trying, to, recording I was trying to give a shout show. out. I forgot the dude's name. You know, th- uh, thank you is, to Toyota Lover for name, commenting. Name, I appreciate his it. His name's Brandon. Okay, well, his he's got name. a real name. He's got a, a <laughs> Christian name. He's got a slave name, and you're gonna fucking use it. <laughs> Your name is Toby <laughs> Kunta. My name is. K- All right, so we're not gonna go into that because we're not the right color to do it. Chris could maybe go halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> With some hard censoring. All right. Um, I'm way too lazy for man. that. Um, 
Okay, so I'm just gonna fucking I'm just gonna start the episode. <laughs> uh, it's already late. And now, uh, the, uh, we tonight, hopefully, uh, maybe just tonight, but this is this is kind of a big subject, so I might be depressed for a few weeks. Uh, we are gonna talk about the rape of Nanking, uh, or as the the, the Chinese uh, whose capital it was at the time uh, called it uh, Nanjing. Um, uh, Nanking is just Ooh, a, uh, some historical shit. Uh, Nanking is just a uh, uh, no, no. This is during World War Two, um, or just before, actually. How's that not historical? <clears throat> I mean, I th- I thought by saying some historical shit, you were thinking along the lines of like ancient history type stuff. Nah. Okay. Good. Nah, but I mean, a couple of a couple generations good, out good, is, good, good, is good. still because yeah. uh, I don't know for sure if anyone that was uh, involved in this is is still alive. Uh, like in the atrocities uh, part of it, but uh, their kids sure are, and they should feel ashamed of themselves and probably commit seppuku. Um, That's Japanese, dude. Let's not be so American. Why don't you listen to the rest of my fucking here. introductory fucking sentence before you tell me that I can't tell people to commit seppuku because this happened during the second Sino-Japanese fucking war. The Japanese, Chris. I mean, you can tell them that this is, anytime you this want. Is a, even if they're Chinese, they can totally commit yeah. it, but I'm just saying. I'm going to be committed after this one. Um, committed to me. <laughs> through marriage. No, that's not what... It's not committal. What? No. I didn't no. say committal. It's a commitment. That's what I said. You're going to be committed. I hate you. I'm going to go home. <laughs> you are Rupert. home. Motherfucker. I'm going to go home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, anyway. Uh, so... Welcome to English class. So this happened uh, during the Second Sino-Japanese War, in which uh, Japan was like, "Hey China, we we want uh, you," and then they were like, you know, in the process of of uh, you know, uh, getting it, uh, or t- no, not just getting it, taking it. Um, God, Dude. surprise sex well. taking it. <laughs> <laughs> See, surprise sex is ruined for me now because surprise sex before was like like streamers and like balloons and like party favors like, and like surprise. just hardcore raw butt. dogging <laughs> but now i'm just gonna think of this which is way worse okay so uh this i always assume surprise sex meant to most people like when you get too drunk and you pass out first and then your boy takes pictures with his dick on your forehead or something like that's that that's not sex we've Chris, all been that is sexual assault we've all been there though <laughs> okay no, no, I, I don't I've get never that been there. For that reason, I knew that guy. I've known you that guy. You were that guy. You were that, that shit. But so no, my friend no, in no, school, not. this happened to him. So one time, <laughs> to my friend, there was this um, time that my friend he was all like, "Man, wouldn't it be crazy if I put my nuts in a guy's mouth?" <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, that would be pretty well, funny. We should do that." And then we did it. And then I mean, I'm, he did it. And then hi, I'm Chris, and not the guy that I was just talking about. Whose name is uh, Tris? Uh, yeah, uh, Christopher. Christian. No. Let's just say, <laughs> don't look at my phone. Why? I can't. Your phone You're is too far. Is miles I'll, away I'll, from me right now, Chris. You next, can change that though, Chris. Next just time, come on over. The next time that you are here and we're able to smell that sweet, sweet strawberry scented hair, I'm stealing that phone. Mm. I'm stealing that phone, and I'm I'm posting it all on the internet. And then I'm stealing that ass. <laughs> okay, see, now it's getting... Dude, once we're into the show, you're going to not want to say things like that. Why? Because it's... Um, okay, so this was also known as the Nanjing Massacre. Um, and the reason it's not just known as, as the rape of Nanking, but, the, you know, the, the massacre of... Um, well, it, this all happened over a period of uh, six weeks. Um, six weeks. <laughs> six six weeks uh december 13th wow. 1937 uh which is the day that the japanese uh, captured nanjing uh and uh over the next six weeks um uh, soldiers of the imperial japanese army uh murdered uh numbers vary uh anywhere from uh 40,000 to over 300,000 the 300,000 is pretty agreed upon for a maximum number uh, but uh, the the low number See, goes anywhere from thirty, forty to fifty thousand. 
uh, depending on who who's telling See, you. See, I knew that WoW was well founded. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> I, even though I didn't know what the actual numbers are, it occurred to me how thorough the Japanese are. Um, it like. And I was just we, like six we weeks. We talked wow, about that's we a talked lot of about time this, for the Japanese to do some fucking. We damage. talked about this very very briefly on the um on the Unit Seven Thirty One episode. Uh, yeah yeah and, yeah yeah. This so uh, this is that same yeah. time frame and everything. And, uh, so wait wait wait. <laughs> yes 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 yes. <laughs> you had all those people it, that to do with Seven Thirty One had nothing to do with this. Um, I mean, they probably knew about it, but they were doing their own fun stuff. No, no, no. But I mean, but I mean, these are, these are two totally different sets of yes. these two, two totally different yes. groups of the same military. Yes, in China, yes, on two totally different hundreds of thousands of fucking Chinese people. Good God, they took a hit. Uh, and yet they keep on kicking. I'm not laughing. No. That's no. It, they're Dude, like the first yeah. time the 731 was like three to five hundred thousand people. Yeah, the Chinese are like the Energizer Bunny of attempted genocides, huh? Wowie zowie! Um, Just keep on going, <laughs> man. Uh, so uh, the, these Whew. these soldiers of the Imperial Japanese Army murdered um, somewhere between uh, forty thousand and three hundred thousand Chinese civilians and also uh, disarmed combatants um, through uh, widespread uh, rape. Uh, and and they did a lot of a lot <laughs> of looting as well um and they probably cut their arms off too um i mean they were like uh so no we th- well see the, uh, we'll get to oh, jesus christ we'll get to a lot of all of this um so in august of 1937 which you may take note is uh, before december uh the japanese army had invaded shanghai <laughs> where they met uh like a uh, really uh, prepared Chinese army, and they suffered really heavy casualties. Um, the, uh, both sides faced, uh, it says here, attrition in urban hand to hand combat. I think that means that there was some fucking badass kung fu slash samurai fighting going on. Oh, and, yeah. uh, and we all know who would win that, right? Yes, the Americans with the A-bomb. Everybody was Those right. Gigs were fast as Everybody was right. And then Indiana Jones walks in with a pistol and just shoots the guy and walks away because he's got dysentery. That's actually a real story. Harrison Ford only did that fucking uh-huh. iconic uh-huh. scene because he had the shits and couldn't do the choreographed right. fight scene. I'm That's being serious. True. That's not true. It is true. It's not true. James, it's you true. Promise? I swear to fuck. Yes, promise? pinky swear. Yes. We, all right, we just pinky promise, guys. All right. That means that if uh, if I'm lying, he gets to put his pinky somewhere. I'm not going to say where because I don't know yet. It's a surprise for everyone, isn't it? I will say it did it it's not going to be back time. in the day. <laughs> it is going to take Esberg timing. Um, <clears throat> uh, by by mid November, uh, the Japanese had eventually captured Shanghai with the help of their navy. Uh, uh, the general staff headquarters in Tokyo initially decided not to expand the war because they had suffered such large casualties and troops uh, were like bummed. <laughs> they were like, wow, uh, like most of the dudes I know aren't uh, people anymore because they're dead. Uh, this is a bummer. Um, but on December 1st, uh, headquarters in, in, uh, in Tokyo uh, ordered the Central China Area Army and the 10th Army to capture Nanjing which was then the capital of China. So, after losing the Battle of Shanghai, the the Chinese, of course, uh, uh, Chiang Kai-shek knew that the fall of Nanjing was a matter of time. He and his peeps uh, eventually realized that they couldn't risk the complete and total annihilation of their their entire army in a, uh, I like what it says here, so I'm not going to change it, symbolic but hopeless defense of the capital. So, hmm. to to keep the army to keep the army as fresh as possible for actual things that they could maybe do, um, most of it was 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 moved. Um, so the the general's strategy was uh, to follow the suggestions of his German advisors, which was to draw the Japanese army deep into China and then use China's uh, huge, vast fucking territory as a defensive strength. You have them go somewhere where they are right. not prepared to fucking live for a while. And fight guerrilla war. That make it a yeah, sense. Indeed. Um, so he, he planned to, to fight a protracted war of attrition to wear down the Japanese in the hinterland of China. Which, you know, like it, it, basically just what I said. Wear them the fuck out. <laughs> it sounds terrifying. They're not ready for it. Just wear them the fuck out, you know? Um, so right. so they, they move. <laughs> 
They move uh, everybody. They fucking move the capital. All this stuff happens, right? We're not going super into the actual military stuff of this because the the that's it's it's all pretty. We're not a fucking history or a military podcast, guys. No, but it. sometimes we're a little bit of each, and I, of course, am a little bit country. Shut your face. And, and a little bit of rock and roll. And, and James is a little bit of rock and roll. And Chris is a lot of a pervert. Siege of the city. <laughs> Uh, so the Japanese military uh, just moved right up to the gates of Nanjing on December 9th. They demanded surrender, and at noon, uh, they dropped leaflets into the city, uh, just saying, hey, guys, um, you should maybe let us in and be like, uh, we're cool, I swear, uh, within 24 hours, or uh, we promise no mercy if this is refused. In the meanwhile, we fuck you up, Slabowski. <laughs> members of the committee Cut off your Johnson. contacted Tang, uh, which is not a euphemism for a vagina, but a man's name, and I would thank you to not giggle. <laughs> and proposed a plan for <laughs> and proposed a plan for a three-day ceasefire, uh, during which the Chinese troops could could withdraw without fighting, and the Japanese troops would stay where the fuck they were. Um. There was uh, a, a guy that we will go into much more depth about, uh, John Rabbit, uh, Rabe, I think his name, or Rabbi, I don't know, R-A-B-E. Uh, he boarded the U.S. gunboat Panay on December 9th and sent two telegrams, one to Chiang Kai-shek by way of the American ambassador in, in Hanko, and one to the Japanese military authority in Shanghai. Um, about the ceasefire, of course. So... Uh, hmm. The Japanese awaited their answer, and uh, no response happened at all by the deadline. So, General uh, Iwane uh, Matsui, he waited one more hour because, hey, you know, sometimes you gotta take a poop before you start. You know, just like uh, yeah, yeah. just like I did tonight. Um, I had to take a poop. Sometimes you gotta take a poop. Um, sometimes. Uh, <laughs> uh. So, uh, but then he he uh, issued the command to take Nanjing by force, and the Japanese army did, it went the fuck at it. <laughs> um, they they just started attacking the walls. Uh, they attacked the three gates on the eastern side. Uh, they launched uh, offensives on the western walls, um, and they they were just like we're gonna we're gonna get in here because uh, we have to poop, <laughs> and all the bathrooms are in there, and that's just. That's how that's war is hell, is what they say. On December 12th, under heavy artillery fire and an aerial bombardment, General Tang Xing Chi ordered his men to retreat. What had followed was nothing short of absolute fucking chaos. Some Chinese soldiers stripped civilians of their clothing in a desperate attempt to blend in and not look like fucking soldiers. And many others were shot by the Chinese super <laughs> supervisory unit as they tried to flee. <laughs> Which is, that mm. builds morale, is what I hear. It's like, <clears throat> oh, I don't want to die. And they're like, die. And I'm like, wait, I knew you. And they're like, yeah, you did. <clears throat> We're supervisors. We got to be tough. We are so in a supervisory yeah. role. And I think this is really how things should be handled. On December 13th. Um, so, yes, wait, sir. wait, 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 wait. Yes, wait, wait, sir. Wait. Do you think? Not yes. often. Do you mm -hmm. think? That if a Japanese guy puts on a Chinese guy's clothes... Nope, that's not what happened. Does he blend that's in? That's not what happened. The Chinese military that was there defending the city, and the Japanese, were, they knew that the Japanese were going to get in. So Chinese people trying to desert I mean, the army to get away would steal the clothes of a commoner and put it on instead of their army clothes in hopes that they wouldn't be found as a Chinese army member. Oh, okay, cool. Because I got lost there too. I was, okay, I was on okay, the same but track. Still, as Chris. So, mm -hmm. are you being racist, Chris? Either way, are you being, are you being racist, Jason? I'm. Mm -hmm. I'm oh, okay. I'm honestly <laughs> curious because I believe there is. I, I believe <clears throat> there is an inherent tell, like you wouldn't know. Asian people's got different that. slanty eyes. We all know that. I don't know. I mean, Asian Japanese people like, are pretty different looking. 
honestly. If a Russian guy walks up to you, do you know he's a different white guy yes. than a regular white guy? Do you know if guy? he's Ukrainian or Russian actually, before he actually, speaks? Actually, yes. I am pretty good at, like, telling, like... If someone, like, like I can look at a picture Europeans of like a British dude. Europeans do have dude. a different looking face, I, don't I, they? I, yeah, no, like I've, British people look different. Like, can, yeah. like I've Canadian smelled, people, I've not smelled really. James's pinky, and I can, I can say that yes, he does have <laughs> ways mm-hmm. of testing. <laughs> well, when I was in Mexico, <laughs> the water they could always tell, especially the when the dude talked. Well, yeah. <clears throat> no, you yeah. can tell. But you can, no, you can I, definitely I mean, tell. Even if they didn't talk, they they could tell. That, that this guy was from yeah. El Salvador. Yeah, or we've this gone over that story before, which is crazy. Chile or but something. you're like, hey, South Americans, crazy. Uh, at goddamn aliens and, wow. and the Mother Mary. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just curious if it, if it would really work, though. Oh, man. If a Japanese guy puts on Chinese guy clothes. I mean, I'm sh- I don't know. Man, they, they, as soon as they yelled at him in Chinese to do something, he'd be like, oh, and then he'd start doing the robot. Just in hopes that right. in hopes that they <laughs> get distracted <laughs> by something <laughs> else. <laughs> now, see, now you're speaking Japanese, man. Now you're fucked. No, ex- ex- <laughs> well, shit, you're right. <clears throat> okay, so so I hate to to really yada 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 the rest of this uh, bombardment and and uh, capital toppling toppling. <laughs> wow, capital toppling. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm gonna. Uh, so yada yada yada. The Japanese army conducted its mopping up operations uh, inside and outside of the Nanjing safety zone. Ew. Since the area outside of the safety zone had been a little coarse. had been almost completely evacuated, uh, the effort was concentrated in the safety zone itself. The safety zone was an area of 3.85 square kilometers and was just jam packed like fucking sardines with the remaining population of Nanjing. Now, what I didn't fucking tell you is that, that yes, <coughs> Nanjing is, like, the, the second largest city in China, even to this day. It is fucking huge. It is hundreds of miles big. Jesus Christ. So they had a l- Personally, a of I like to keep most of the jam packing and all the activities away from my safety zone. Mm. See, I thought you were going to talk about me. delicious preserves, man. I was like, yeah, preserves. I'm down with preserves. Let's do some jam packing. Um, <laughs> um, so, okay. So, uh, <laughs> uh, this is, this is, I'm not that this old. is from, from uh, the, the Nanjing uh, Wikipedia page. Um, it is the, the, the blah, 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 second largest city in the East China region with 11 districts, an administrative area of 2,500 square miles. And a total population of 8,436,200 as of 2018. That's... That's... Fucking two-thirds the size of this country. 2,500 miles, one city. <clears throat> the Japanese the majority the of our country. And has yeah, but also city. that, that 2018 oh, statistic doesn't really matter so much because that's like 80 years is like a long time. Um... No, I guess. I mean, but the, it was still that big, though. Is what I'm, yeah, I'm sure the size you know. was, but I guess square I miles isn't quite uh, the same. No, because like an estimated like yeah. uh, population. Because like if they're oval time. miles, it's like they're a little longer in, in some spots. You know what I mean? Are you being racist right now? A little bit. Do yeah. They, do they have to be a, a different stretchy form of measurement for you? I didn't. Yeah. I mean. Wow. Um. Wow. All of this is getting edited out. I'm going to look like a fucking a, a, a sweetheart in this, and you guys are going to look like garbage. <laughs> um, so, garbage. Uh, so the Japanese Army leadership assigned sections of the safety zone to uh, different units to separate alleged plainclothes soldiers from the civilians. The number of Chinese soldiers in plainclothes that were executed are an estimated 4,000. Executed? Damn. Yes. <clears throat> So now, uh, I, 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 my body won't let me say we get to the fun part after the word now. Um, mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. it's not fun. And I didn't even have fun fucking researching this. It was just a fucking bummer. But fuck all of you. You're going to bum too. Now we get to That's why he does it, and the massacre. What? What? So eyewitness accounts of everything that happened there. We get the, the the biggest wealth of them from Westerners that were there. Uh, like, uh, they, they were um, 
in in uh, like uh, roles of uh, you know they 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 all kinds of different shit. You'll hear. Just shut up. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, <sighs> fuck. I hate these sentences. <laughs> I have to say, over the course of the next six weeks, um, Japanese troops engaged in mass rape, murder, theft, arson, and uh, many other war crimes. Some of the primary accounts, including the diaries of John Rabe or Rabe, whatever, and American Minnie Vautrin, which I, there's a book about uh, her called uh, uh, the, uh, An American Angel at the Rape of Nanking, which uh, seems like it's a good read. Melissa actually downloaded it. I don't know why she couldn't even listen to me talk about it, but she's going to read a fucking... Anyway. <laughs> um, uh, so they... They, op- they opted to stay behind to protect uh, all the Chinese civilians from these fucking crazy-ass Japanese. Uh, other accounts include first-person testimonies of Nanjing massacre survivors, eyewitness reports of journalists, both Western and Japanese, and also the field diaries of military personnel. American missionary John McGee stayed behind to provide a 16 millimeter film documentary and first-hand photographs of the Nanjing massacre. Ew. It is... Uh, it's jarring. <laughs> it's Ew. jarring. I've seen some fucked up shit uh, at war uh, photography and and video and and this is it's probably the worst. It's probably the worst. Um, so Ish. there there were a group of foreign expats uh, that were headed by a uh, rabe. Uh, they had a fifteen man international committee basically. And on November 22nd, they mapped out the Nanjing safety zone in order to try to safeguard civilians in the city. <clears throat> um, the city population, surprise, surprise, had drastically... Uh, uh, it, Dwindled? Wait, what? Dwindled? No, well, well first, uh, in the 1930s, the mid-1930s, uh, it actually inflated quite a bit as a whole lot of refugees yeah. uh, fled from the Japanese aggression in the north. Um, Rabe and Arabe, I'm just going to say Rabe, because he's German. Rabe. Rabe. Yeah, it sounds right. Uh, an American missionary, Rabe. Louis S.C. Smythe, secretary of the International Committee and a professor of sociology at the University of Nanking, uh, recorded the actions of the Japanese troops and they filed complaints with the Japanese embassy because, hey, I'm a white guy, Japan. Listen to me. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I'm going to grumble and shake my finger at you a little I'm bit. I'm going to save uh, the next thing uh, for either later on in this show or more likely seeing where we're at now uh, next episode because it takes some getting into and it is fucked. <sighs> so. <clears throat> Can I just make mention one more time? You can do whatever quick. you like I, to do, Chris. <clears throat> oh, well then, James. Yeah. Prepare thine diddly hole. Uh oh. God, this show's uh, gotten so much gay since we've been on it. I like it. Um, no, nah, I was just going to say, like, I, and I said this during the episode of, uh, for the Unit 731, too, but, like, what the fuck is it with the Americans? And, and I am American. I know about some of the shit we've done <laughs> and been into. <clears throat> yeah. What is it with us boohooing about shit when, like, listen to what the, listen to what the fuck we're talking okay, about? This well, is so much okay, worse we've done, than uh, yes. anything we've but, ever um, done. No, I, I, I mean, maybe the the mass six months six month rape and decimation of six a week. city six week. I'm sorry, my bad. I Not fig- that bad. I figured it would take <laughs> six months. Uh, but no, they, so much more. I mean, something actually. like this is like pretty serious. They I mean, this is so a pretty faster. it massive scale and kind of thing. Like this is like possibly a world issue so at that point. I was gonna try to make this like a surprise when I brought it up, but um, John Rabe is the German ambassador to China, and he is an honest to god, card carrying, Hitler following, fucking Nazi. He Uh-oh. is the hero of our story. Wait, you did tell me about wow. this. Wow. <laughs> hey. I so. Mean, if a Nazi is like, hey, down. guys, cut it out. Something's fucking wrong. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Like, this is exactly what I'm saying. So many more things have happened 
in other countries that we're boohooing about some shit that just seems I mean yeah it's bad but it just seems so minuscule when you when you hear about stories like this okay so uh, let's all put on our big boy pants now uh, or big lady pants mm-hmm. um, I'm, with pants. I'm, I'm saying our fat jeans because uh, man are we about to get I, I'm not wearing any panties right now by the way well, neither am I. I'm wearing, Could you put some on? I'm wearing boxer briefs. Why would you be wearing panties? That sounds super uncomfortable. Please. I just thought you guys. It helps. It helps. Throwing out. It there. helps hide the farts, bro. You guys can not thongs. Yeah, they do. It's, it's like when you used to take like a blade of grass or a piece of paper when you were a kid and like use it to like make that sound. You know, you'd put it between your lips and, and you'd no, 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 it's no, like no, a whistle. no. It slides up in there, gives like a little bit of space and a little bit of no. like 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 resistance. You guys it are helps. Fucked up, man. It helps. I promise. It's not helping me right now. <laughs> Wait, it helps can me. You whistle, can you do the leaf whistle with your butt cheeks? Is that what you're talking yes. about? Sa- yes, saying? I can. I don't know if he can. <laughs> I'm saying that I had a girlfriend <laughs> once that had uh, a bit of gas one night while she was asleep and she was wearing a thong. And yes, that is a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> that, this is from like 20 years ago. That just made it's my gross. Listen, buttholes have changed since then, bro. I think that's actually what made me... <laughs> I think that's what actually made me start hating farts, really, is, is that... Uh, so anyway, back to uh, a different kind of terrible. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, th- you know, there was a, a, a military tribunal uh, and stuff like that after after everything, of course, uh, that estimated that uh, 20,000, 20,000, 20,000. Two zero 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 zero. Women, including some children and the elderly, were raped during the occupation. <clears throat> a large number of the rapes were done systematically wow. by the Japanese soldiers as they went from door to door searching for girls with with many women being captured and gang raped. The women were often killed immediately after being raped, often through explicit mutilation or by penetrating vaginas with bayonets, long sticks of bamboo or other objects. This next the, can I now, uh, see they started doing uh, that after they lost their own stamina. Wait, this this can, can I say something about that? Wait, no, you gotta hold on a second because I have to get this next sentence out of the way because every time I fucking read it, it kills a part of my fucking soul. Young children were not exempt from the atrocities and were cut open to allow Japanese soldiers to rape them. Wow. At the moment of silence was fucking perfect, oh, guys. Yeah, rough. Yeah, yeah, no, I had to process that for a second. Because it's... Man. So... But yes, please. I, I saw some... There are pictures out there. It's there. If you want to go look at them, you can. Just Google Rape and Nanking photos. Um, found, like, a 28-photo album that I just flipped through real quick before the show. Um, one of them that really kind of set that in for me was it was it was a shot of, like, stairs. Like, like, step, like stone steps leading up to somewhere with just piles of bodies and most of them were noticeably bottomless pantless <laughs> yeah um uh, one thing yeah, that, that kind of set it in that, a little bit more for me like seeing that it was like on the steps like you said they immediately would have killed him so it, was, mm-hmm. it happened there it, it, something that we'll find out with this is that it's it's such a fuck with the with the japanese military that were, that were there it's such a fucking mob mentality it's a oh we're supposed to be here and we're supposed to be fighting these guys and killing these guys well oh wait that guy's raping that chick okay well uh, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll rape another and then two. it fucking just goddamn like they burned many people alive they mm-hmm. buried many people alive they ceremonially <laughs> fucking uh cut heads off like they were they that like they were seconds in in a seppuku um I, you know, I've been kind of thinking it the whole time, and I would have eventually mentioned it if you hadn't just done so. But I, I would have, yeah, I would have said the same thing. <coughs> Mob mentality is a motherfucker, yeah. man. It's scary when you think you're doing what other people that are above you think you should be doing, and then the people right. above you give you no fucking punishment for it. So that just means, well, maybe I'll fucking push it a little further and see what happens. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to yeah. bring this up just because I don't yeah, think yeah. this is going to come up in your, your notes. Mm-hmm. But um, in that album, you know, they had little descriptions under it. One was of uh, two men smiling, um, holding heads. Mm. And uh, the caption read uh, that they were two soldiers who had challenged each other. No, stop, 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 be, stop, stop, no, stop, wait, no, it's no, not that bad. It's not no, that bad. No, I need you to stop because okay. that is a very big part of my story. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay thank you. Um, <laughs> so Cut on, that out. Cut that from the record. <laughs> on, on December 19th. 
1937, the Reverend James M. McCollum wrote in his diary, I know not where to end. Never I have heard or read such brutality. Rape, rape, rape. We estimate at least a thousand cases a night and many by day. In case of resistance or anything that seems like disapproval, there is a bayonet stab or a bullet. People are hysterical. Women are being carried off every morning, afternoon, and evening. The whole Japanese army seems to be free to go and come as it pleases and to do whatever it pleases. <clears throat> Man. Um... So there, there was uh, a surgeon in the, the the safety zone, Robert O. Wilson. Uh, he was uh, there un, under the uh, the U.S. administration, and he he wrote in a letter to his family: a conservative estimate of people slaughtered in cold blood is somewhere about one hundred thousand, including, of course, thousands of soldiers that had thrown down their arms. Um, I'm going to read <coughs> here just uh, two two little excerpts from from letters to his family uh, in, in December. Uh, the slaughter of civilians is appalling. I could go on for pages telling of cases of rape and brutality almost beyond belief. Two bayoneted corpses are the only survivors of seven street cleaners who were sitting in their headquarters when Japanese soldiers came in without warning or reason and killed five of their number and wounded the two that found their way to the hospital. Well, hold on, hold on Damn. one second. Hold on one second. Uh, hey James, are you fucking kidding me? Come on, dude. I'm recording a show. Can't fucking hear that. I see it on my recording. You see it. Yes, James. Okay. <clears throat> Excerpt number two. Let me recount some instances occurring in the last two days. Last night, the house of one of the Chinese staff members of the university was broken into and two of the women, <coughs> his relatives, were raped. Two girls, about 16, were raped to death in one of the refugee camps. In the university middle school... To death? Yeah, raped to death. How? You'll, you don't want to know. You'll find out. In the university middle school where there are 8,000 people, the Japs came in 10 times last night over the wall, stole food, clothing, and raped until they were satisfied. They bayoneted one little boy of eight, who had five bayonet wounds, including one that penetrated his stomach, and a portion of omentum was outside the abdomen. That's just a, like the inner stomach. Um, I think he will live, he says. Um, <clears throat> Jesus. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, John Rabe now. John... Heinrich Detlef Rabe was born in uh, n November 23rd, 1882, and he died January 5th, 1950. He was a German businessman and a Nazi party member who uh, eventually was best known for his efforts to stop the atrocities of the Japanese army during the Nanking occupation. And... Uh, he, he, he saved and sheltered approximately 200,000 Chinese people from Japanese slaughter. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, damn. Yeah, he, he, uh, he's, he's super German looking too, right, James? No, yeah, no, he looks, he, <laughs> he looks like what you'd expect See, a picture of a Nazi to look like. not just a regular like. white guy. <laughs> he, yeah, it, it, James has his pinky in there and he's like, mm, German. Yep, uh, this feels like a German to me. German. <laughs> <laughs> German. Oh, Germanic, even. Mm. Uh, uh, so smells like warm beer. It, it, yeah, German mm. German beer is. I mean, everybody's like, ooh, Oktoberfest and stuff, and I'm like, yeah, Fraulein's and whatnot, but like, really, German piss. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, you know what? Um, let's see where. Okay, uh, so. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. Uh, according, but well, no, we're not even going to say that shit, uh, cause it's, it's all kinds of just numbers and stuff like that. Okay. Diary entries ready. Um, in his diary, <laughs> Rabe documented Japanese atrocities that were committed, um, on the city. And, uh, he writes, it is not until we tour the city that we learn the extent of destruction. We come across corpses every hundred to 200 yards. 
The bodies of civilians that I had examined had bullet holes in their backs. These people had been presumably fleeing and were shot from behind. The Japanese marched through the city in groups of 10 to 20 soldiers and looted the shops. I watched with my own eyes as they looted the cafe of our German baker, Herr uh, Kessling. Um, Hempel's hotel was broken into as well as almost every shop on Chongsheng and Taiping Road. Um, so he actually had interaction with, with German authorities because, <clears throat> as we all know, the Germans and the Japanese were like all like making out and like grabbing each other's butts at this time. So, right, right, right. so he, uh, at first, he was like, uh, uh-huh. it says here, he took a, a conciliatory tone. Um, um. <laughs> <laughs> where he, he handed a letter of thanks to the Japanese army commander uh, stating that the people in the safety zone were all safe and not one shot had been fired and you know thanks guys everybody in the safety zone totally safe in it he says <clears throat> dear commander of the Japanese army in Nanking we appreciate that the artillery men of your army didn't attack the safety zone and we hope to contact with you uh, to make a plan to protect general Chinese citizens who are staying in the safety zone. We will be pleased to cooperate with you in any way to protect general citizens in this city. Signed, Chairman of the Nanking oh. International Committee, John H.D. Rabe. Wait, wait, so, so what was that word earlier? What does that mean? Concili- concil- Cutlery? What? Conciliatory. Okay, so not like... No, in like a, in like a con- council type way. Oh okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, like oh okay. He was part of the council. you meant of like, you know yeah. the German consulate. Um, I thought uh, it meant like he had like a little bit of an attitude, like a little backhand. No, know. no. This that's this letter oh. on December seventeenth. He wrote in a very different tone. He says, two Japanese soldiers have climbed over the garden wall and are about to break into our house. When I appear, they give the excuse that they saw two Chinese soldiers climb over the wall." When I show them my party badge, they return the same way. In one of the houses in the narrow street behind my garden wall, a woman was raped and then wounded in the neck with a bayonet. I managed to get an ambulance so we can take her to to uh, Kulau Hospital. Last night, up to oh, last night, up to a thousand women and girls are said to have been raped. About a hundred girls at uh, Ginling Girls College alone. You hear nothing but rape. If husbands or brothers intervene, they're shot. What you hear and see on all sides is the brutality and bestiality of the Japanese soldiers. This is this is a letter to the Japanese that he's writing. <laughs> um, right, right. Uh, he so, obviously bestiality in the not in the no, but being beast like you know, interspecies yeah. erotic. I mean, type of you way. know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say they fuck some dogs too. Fuck them. So I mean, I. <laughs> Common sense tells me the answer to this is no, but did Japanese citizens really have any type of firearms during this time? I mean, no, no, because no, they never have, right? I mean, they were in Japan anyway; it didn't matter. What do you mean? We're in China. Okay, okay, just China. I mean, sorry. I'm... Oh, you mean the Chinese? Yeah, have well, the... no, they surrendered. They're like, hey, man, you got us. We're yeah, and so no, but like as a citizen. I'm As saying. a citizen, you're going to shoot that guy, and then five of them are going to stab you with bayonets as they rape the holes that they make. I mean, if they're rape my mother and sister, I'm going to die anyway. Because this has been going on for six weeks. At some point, you have to realize that nobody's going to be spared. They're doing this but shit But then after just six weeks, it. it's over. No, but, yeah, that's six weeks of time, dude. I mean, you that's can... A, that's a month and a half. Like, I'm, ta- I'm saying during that time, you should realize, like, two weeks in, a weekend, a few days in, you should realize, like, nobody's going to be spared so like why not like if if that um, is an option like, okay well first, that's why i'm asking first, about the gun first thing. of all don't ever tell me what i should realize second of all <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> uh second of all uh i don't know man everybody uh, that is extreme that is extreme fucking stress dude that is that is that that's not even stress yeah, anymore that's a... torture that is I, like if i had a gun it, it, it wouldn't it's a petrified with fear sort of situation if i had a gun it wouldn't be used to try to repel the Japanese army, it would be to eat a bullet. You know, save one for myself. You know? Maybe, man. Straight I'm up. not saying, like... Like, that's... Like, I feel like the amount of hopelessness I would feel in that situation, 
I would sorry. I would see it as like a why not type of thing. Like maybe do <clears throat> like a like pop off as many as I can or something but and then kill myself I or think, something. I think that you just like that hopelessness like, I think that you would be able to, to realize the, the the pure futility of it. It would do nothing. It would do nothing but make them murder it, your it entire makes, family. It would, it would make my death worse. <clears throat> No, it, they're gonna murder my entire family anyway. You, as a single person, mm. might feel that way. You know, maybe if you weren't fucking paralyzed mm. with fear. Mm. But as a family person, you know, well, the, the whole part to, of this was to, I was trying to, to ask if anyone had like tried to do anything. If there was any sort of rebellion, like fucking, oh, like any kind of. No, well, <clears throat> I mean, but you'll <clears throat> we'll get to it. It's it's all in in chronological order, I think. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this, man. You, you I think? hate this. Uh, so, <clears throat> as we continue with, with Rabe, and I didn't mean to, to, to cut you off or anything, James. I'm just saying that... Oh, no, it's I, cool. This, uh, I, I hate this as well. Like, I, don't, I don't know how well that, that, that uh, mindset uh, played in, in 1930s China. I'm sure m- people were pissed. I'm sure people were pissed. Yeah. No, my whole point of that, like I said, was I was just trying to see if there was any sort of like rebellion, like cells or anything like that. Yeah. Like with like <clears> if <throat> anyone, well, like there was reported things of people trying to like like any actual something. historical yeah. like, trying to, like stand up for something. Well, I mean, you know what uh, that's what I was trying to get. You know, to. M- maybe uh, maybe once we're, we're finished with it, uh, we'll find out later at eleven. Which is <laughs> now. Oh. That was that was a half an hour ago. <laughs> <clears throat> so on December seventeenth, that's after the weather. Of uh, course. Rabe wrote a letter. As chairman to the Kyoshi Fukui, wait, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, fuck that, I don't give a shit. Second secretary of the Japanese embassy. The following is an excerpt. In other words, on the 13th, when your troops entered the city, we had nearly all the civilian population gathered in a zone in which there had been very little destruction by stray shells and no looting by Chinese soldiers, even in full retreat. <clears throat> All 27 Occidentals in the city at the time and our Chinese population were totally surprised by the reign of robbery, raping, and killing initiated by your soldiers on the 14th. All we are asking in our protest is that you restore order among your troops and get the normal city life going as soon as possible. In the latter process, we're glad to to cooperate in any way we can, but even last night between 8 and 9 p.m., when five Occidental members of our staff and committee toured the zone to observe conditions. We did not find any single Japanese patrol either in the zone or at the entrances. So he's saying, you guys won. Get city life back to city life and we're, we'll help. Like, we are here to make this fucking Japanese transition work. But we right. have seen no... We, we've seen zero attempt by the Japanese army in any way to, A, protect these people, or just, like, make sure the rest of the Japanese army aren't being complete and total fuckheads. Right. Having received no answer to his request, he wrote again to the guy the following day. We are sorry to trouble you again, but the sufferings and needs of the 200,000 civilians for whom we are trying to care make it urgent that we try to secure action from your military authorities to stop the present disorder among Japanese soldiers wandering through the safety zone. The second man in our housing commission had to see two women in his family at 23 Hankow Road raped last night at supper time by the Japanese soldiers. Our associate food commissioner, Mr. Sohn, has has to convey trucks with rice and leave 2,500 people and families at his Nanking Theological Seminary to look after themselves. Yesterday, in broad daylight, several women at the seminary were raped right in the middle of a large room filled with men, women, and children. We 22 Occidentals cannot feed 200,000 Chinese civilians and protect them night and day. That is the duty of the Japanese authorities. So, I know, duty. duty. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> I know. I, I wanted to, but I just felt it was wrong. But then I was like, well, if James is going <laughs> to, I might as well. well. There was a lot of tension. <clears throat> On February 10th, 1938, he wrote in his diary, uh, Fukui, 
who I tried to find at the Japanese embassy to no avail all day yesterday, paid a call on me last night. He actually managed to threaten me. If the newspapers in Shanghai report bad things, you will have the Japanese army against you, he said. In reply to my question as to what I then could say in Shanghai, Fukui said, we leave that to your discretion. My response, it looks as if you expect me to say something like this to reporters. The situation in Nanking is improving every day. Please don't print any more atrocity stories about the vile behavior of the Japanese soldiers, because then you'll only be pouring oil on the fire of disagreement that already exists between the Japanese and Europeans. Yes, he said, simply beaming. Okay. That would be splendid. <laughs> so just like, like, oh, very good idea. <laughs> oh, I like the way man. you think. <clears throat> Ouch. Ouchy, ouch, ouch, ouches. So that is, uh, I mean, he is he is genuinely uh, not only concerned for the safety of the two th- 200,000, sorry, uh, Chinese civilians and, uh, you know, surrendered fucking uh, military <clears throat> that are in the safe zone that he is basically head of. He is, he he's terrified. He sees, Sounds that he way. sees the the fuck man what do you even call the the depravity of of an entire fucking army that is just at its basest basis form doing as they please m- with murder and rape and and looting like how, wh- what is a word for the fuck man it's just the fact that like, in such a broad that, that- that like, one works. Like, such a mass amount of people, that is what they want, is just to rape and murder and loot. It, like, that is a that is an actual desire for them. Yeah. And it's just, it's crazy. It's, it's so crazy, though. That's crazy, <clears throat> man. Crazy, man. I like it when you do it like that more. Yeah, It's yeah. more fun that way. <laughs> gets, gets the spirits up a little bit. A little room. bit. Not enough, though. It's nice. I mean, I like it. Would it help it. if I said that? Uh, I think it was funny. crazy, man. That's better, actually. Yes, thank you. Oh, sweet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's better. Thanks, um, uh, Chris. Please, you think this one? Per- personally, I, I like the ones that are just fucking mind bottling. <clears throat> Did you say mind bottling? Like, are we bottling mines for future <laughs> sale? Because the Japanese might. Be. The Japanese have already cornered that market. <laughs> They are. It's just when you put them, when you put your mind in a bottle. Man, and smushing brains into bottles. It's all just day. Just throw it away. So, uh, next we're, we're uh, well, okay, so there are also accounts of Japanese troops forcing families to commit incestuous acts. Sons, Jesus fucking Christ. Sons were forced to rape their mothers and fathers forced to rape their daughters. Again, that nobody How? ordered them to do that. That is something they were yeah. like, "Hey guys, wouldn't it be cool if we made him fuck her?" Hey, wouldn't it be funny, guys? Is like, and that guy's like, <laughs> "Wouldn't just, it be like crazy, man?" He's like just pushing like an idea too far, so they'd be like, "Whoa, man, too far." But then they're like, "Yes, I have this family here. Let's do it." And he's like, "Oh fuck, now we're we just do another that. Saturday night with the boys, man." Okay, right now, let me, let me. I'll, Let me break this down please. into uh-huh. yeah. a, a, a the prob the issue that I'm having. No, with that's that fine. Part. I'm gonna hit the bowl. Let me break talk. it down yeah. into break it break it down for me. Sure, please. sure, sure. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna make this analogy about about like the porn industry, right? Okay. okay that is so. not appropriate. <laughs> okay. I'm, Absolutely I'm, fucking not. I'm ready for this. No, I want to hear what he has. No, to no, say. no, 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 no. It's fine. No, it's Go. it's very innocent. I okay. promise. It's innocent. Now, a woman in front of a camera, Mm -hmm. whether she is physically aroused, mentally aroused, whatever, by the man that she is on set to do her scene with, technically doesn't matter because we make things like lube. However, you're on saying the other how hand, did the sons and fathers if, get boners to have sex with their mothers and daughters? Yes, I don't think that shit you should yes. be thinking about. How Chris, do you force somebody to do that with bayonets and bullets? It doesn't. Oh, see, like, now that's even more fucked up, Jason. You just had to go and that's the facts. What do you mean? 
How is she gonna do it? Jedi yeah. mind tricks? Real I mean, I I would not. I wouldn't be able to fucking perform. Uh, and I. That's what I'm saying. I would, I would gleefully grab the nearest Japanese rifle and put it in my mouth, and be like, "Please, this is more fun." Um. Fair enough, but then you know you don't do that because you know then they're just gonna go and do that to you know your mom hey, and man, sisters. I don't have any sisters, but I have one of those other things you just said, and I don't want to think of anything about that. This is uh, don't talk about my uh, mama like that, Chris. So, so the next section that we're gonna get into is uh, the is the massacre of civilians. Not that we haven't been talking about that, um, but what's great is that the the, the picture at the header of this is uh, is is um, you know uh, what's what's that called at the bottom of a picture when it tells caption. you what the caption says a boy killed by a Japanese. It sounds like wait, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <clears throat> I was just gonna say it sounds like like like. Chips and salsa, like what? Whatever you order, you're gonna get raped with it. I don't know. I don't. You should stop going to that Chris, restaurant, man. Where are you going? <laughs> it's definitely a truck stop, <laughs> but it's some man. I like that you said that, Chris. That feels just... good inside. That was, that was a good break. I like it. So, a boy killed by a Japanese soldier with the butt of a rifle because he didn't take his hat off. Mm-hmm. So it's a picture of this boy, uh, br- head and brains all smashed in, just laying at the side of the road, all because he didn't take his fucking hat off. That's why I never wear a hat. And that's terrible, but in that that's situation, why? I would have just taken my fucking hat off, dog. I mean, I, I, like, look, yeah, that's terrible. Okay, so but what if you couldn't understand the orders being barked at okay, you I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Japanese. I forgot about that. <clears throat> so... True that. So fo- <laughs> I, I always wondered that one too. So following the cap, the about capture, war yeah. in other countries, well, war is hell, uh, if, <laughs> and also war. And also, uh, you know, if you if you if your job is is doing what you love, then you never work a day in your life. <laughs> Said the Japanese soldier. Said the say. Japanese with a bayonet and a heart on. Following the capture of Nanjing, a massacre which was pen- <laughs> I got a, I perpetrated. I very almost said penetrated. Perpetrated by the Imperial Japanese nice. Army, led to the deaths of up to sixty thousand residents in the city. A figure difficult to calculate exactly because uh, they fucking had tons of mass graves and they burnt tons of bodies and just threw them in the Yangtze River, um, which you know, mm, Japanese ultra nationalists uh, now like. They're the they're like the uh, the white supremacists of Japan. Uh, they're like nah, the, just, the body that we didn't kill more than like a couple hundred civilians. Whatevs, we're gonna go jack each other's tiny penises off into each other's mouths and then think about our older stepsister that totally totally let us touch her boob at one time. And ouch, my braces, guys, it's caught in your beard. Okay, I'm looking at your notes, dog. It did not say it 90% says all of that. of that. It says. Oh wait, oh wait, I see it now. Yes. My bad. I love every bit of what yeah. you just I was, said. I was that at the was, top. That was you see the quote part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, uh, so they're they're fat. They're stupid. Oh. Um, they're fat and stupid. I said. Oh. oh um, okay. um. Ouch. So here's um. Uh, but, but there's uh, just running past the same uh, John Rabe uh, thing from before. But okay, here we go. Uh, on the 10th of February, 1938, uh, legation secretary of the German embassy wrote to his foreign ministry about a film made in December by Reverend John McGee to recommend its purchase. It says, during the Japanese reign of terror in Nanking, which, by the way, continues to this day, continues to this day to a considerable degree the Reverend John McGee, a member of the American Episcopal Church Mission who has been here for almost a quarter of a century took motion pictures that eloquently bear witness to the atrocities committed by the Japanese. One will have to wait and see whether the highest officers in the Japanese army succeed as they have indicated in stopping the activities of the troops which continue even today. On December 13th, about 30 soldiers came to a Chinese house. 30 soldiers. Now, remember that. Came to a Chinese house at number 5 Sing Lu Ku in the southeastern part of Nanking and demanded entrance. The door was opened by the landlord, a uh, Mohammedan. 
Sure, named Ha. They killed him immediately with a revolver and also Mrs. Ha, who knelt before them after Ha's death, begging them not to kill anyone else. Mrs. Ha asked them why they killed her husband and they shot her. Mrs. Ha was dragged out from under a table in the guest hall where she had tried to hide with her one-year-old baby. After being stripped and raped by one or more men, she was bayoneted in the chest and then had a bottle thrust into her vagina. The baby was killed with a bayonet. Some soldiers then went to the next room where Mrs. Uh, Hisai, uh, Hisai's parents, aged 76 and 74, and her two daughters, aged 16 and 14, were. <clears throat> they were about to rape the girls when the grandmother tried to protect them. The soldiers killed her with a revolver. The grandfather grasped the body of his wife and was killed. The two girls were then stripped, the elder being raped by two to three men and the younger by three. The older girl was stabbed afterwards and a cane was rammed into her vagina. The younger girl was bayoneted also but was spared the horrible treatment that had been meted out to her sister and mother. The soldiers then bayoneted another sister between seven and eight who was also in the room. The last murders in the house were of Ha's two children, aged four and two, respectively. The older was bayoneted, <clears throat> and the younger split down through the head with a sword. Jesus fucking Christ! Uh, yeah, it's 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 rough, man. And like that is, uh... the 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 time frame of this like keeps setting in harder and harder for me like six weeks is like it's two words but like you you gotta realize these are what 42 24 hour periods you you these soldiers wake up they do these things then they go to sleep they go back to their camp they have a nice night's sleep they wake up they do it again for 40 more days they do that again Seriously. and again and again. I'm sure they don't take breaks. I'm sure none of them are like, nah, I had my fill of rape yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's... it's Right. <clears throat> it's rough. Pregnant women just... were targeted for murder as their stomachs were often bayoneted, sometimes after rape. Tang Junshan, survivor and witness to one of the Japanese Army's systematic killings, testifies, the seventh and last person in the first row was a pregnant woman. The soldier thought he might as well rape her before killing her, so he pulled, might her, as well. out, pulled her out of the group to spot about ten meter to a, stop, a spot about ten meters away. As he was trying to rape her, the woman resisted fiercely. The soldier abruptly stabbed her in the belly with a bayonet. She gave a final scream as her intestines spilled out. Then, the soldier stabbed the fetus with its umbilical uh, stabbed the fetus with its umbilical cord clearly visible and tossed it aside. Jesus. According to, according to Navy veteran Sho Mitani, the army used a trumpet sound that meant kill all Chinese who run away. Thousands were led away and mass executed in an excavation known as the 10,000 Corpse Ditch, a trench measuring about 300 meters long and 5 meters wide. Since records weren't kept, Estimates regarding the number of victims buried in the ditch range from 4,000 to 20,000. What the God. However, m most, most scholars and historians consider the number to be uh, more than 12,000 victims at least. That were at just least. buried That's... alive in a fucking ditch. Son of a bitch 12, on a cracker. 12,000 people. 12,000 people like, were buried alive in a ditch. Mm -hmm. I'm just imagining, like, a, like a canal, like, just right, like, on West Espinade or something, and just trying to imagine 12,000 bodies piled in there. And I'm sure the ditches weren't that, you know, deep, you know what I'm saying? Like, Seriously. I, um, I keep trying to make visuals of this, because it's it, so hard to, like, grasp. Like, these, like, numbers are... Maybe it's just me, man. Maybe no, these numbers uh, are fucking astronomical. Yeah, it's they really are. Like, just try to imagine twelve thousand people. Like, no stadium can fit twelve thousand people. Well, well, no, it's not. Sure. Oh yeah, the biggest one's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Five thousand or something. Stadium. Okay, imagine the most biggest, stadium. Imagine the biggest stadium in the world, uh, all just full of dead people. 
And that's just one spot. Yeah. That's so, one spot. So the Hui, the the Hui one, people... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was just... It, it just made me think about... We, we were talking about uh, WWE earlier. When they did the uh, WrestleMania in... I want to say it was Houston a couple years ago. They broke their own numbers of uh, their own record of a completely sold out stadium of somewhere around like 82,000 people or some shit like that. Oh, okay. Okay. Good completely fucking boy. That's way too many people. Sold out and that See these is, kind of numbers are so hard to gauge. That's yeah, still it's, it's only idiot. like a third of the numbers we're talking about. Yeah. Not even. Yeah. Yeah, but but just try to just try to imagine 20,000 of anything. And that's just again in one spot. This is one thing when these are projected to be closer to like the like eighty thousand or something like that, eighty thousand, one hundred thousand. So it wait, what what stadium Disgusting. is that? Or what, okay, so uh, Yankee Stadium uh, can hold fifty four thousand two hundred and fifty one people. Okay, my stadium knowledge just sucks. I guess. No, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> but but take take half a Yankee Stadium and bury them under the ground. Yeah. Jesus, fuck. And that's every single seat so, filled. So, yeah, that's the one I think Chris was just talking about was the MetLife Stadium, which can fit 82,000 people. Yeah. So. It's including the nosebleeds and the obstructed but, views. Yeah, but we're still at, at full talking 300,000 people. Fuck. Anyway, the, the Hui people, uh, they are a minority mm-hmm. Chinese group, the majority of which are Muslim, uh, suffered just as badly during the massacre. Uh one of their mosques was found destroyed and others were found to be just filled with dead bodies. Um, Hui volunteers uh, ended up uh, burying over 100 of their dead um, from all of this. Uh, and they are a very small group of people that, that are in that are Chinese living there in China as, as a, a very tiny uh, minority. And, um, and 100 people in just uh, this massacre decimated their numbers completely it's, it's weird um so now we get to the uh, man I, none of this is fun none of it no. none of the, i mean i like you guys you guys are my friends but uh the fact that i felt the need to read all about this just so i could talk to you fucking assholes about it like makes me want new friends <laughs> <laughs> jason you come and visit me at work all the time what are you talking about we talk about other things i go there to poop and you know it that's true. I, okay. I didn't mean to talk to so you about that. So the extra judicial, judicial, son of a bitch, extra, extra, judicial? extra judicial Wait, 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 killing wait, 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 wait. Yes. Let, 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 no. Let me, let me no. just real quick remark on your last statement. Nope. This was your idea. My subjects are fun. Oh, I know. Fun. <laughs> I, sa- I, I said I didn't have any other ideas for it, so I couldn't just, like, change it at the last minute. Uh, and, and truthfully, I, I it is a good topic. Though. Tr- truthfully, I kind I'm kind of loving explaining this, uh, but it's just it's so hard on your your innards like, no, when you hear these things. I'm digging and especially like about while it. I'm reading, like while I'm reading actual like word for word correspondence from people that saw these things, it fucking chills me to the bone because I. It's fu- It's totally fucking real. Yeah. This happened. This person witnessed this happen last night, and and the fact that these are all real people, like all these years of experience that like you or me have, just living life like they have as well. They have their own lives and their own families and their own friends and uh, pets and what whatever the fuck they're just. Well, that people made it extra like depressing. You and, me, and then suddenly their city's under siege. Yeah. Their 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 families being raped and murdered and mutilated and burned and. And it's, life just switches, like, completely flips. It's like fucking the apocalypse over there. This, I think, would be the best place to uh, to reiterate. Email us at snasnpod at gmail.com or... See no, hear no, speak no pod at gmail.com. Yeah. I give up. Or comment on Podbean. Just remember, this could have been your families. If you were... that. Now, imagine whatever <laughs> respective city you are in. That you're listening to this from. Imagine if we're you're talking enti- to you, Cleveland. Imagine <laughs> your entire respective city, and then the four nearest respective cities mm-hmm. in this happening. Just one day, just done, and for six weeks. That Straight. zombie apocalypse type yeah. annihilation. There's nothing it really you can is. do, dude. It's like, especially back then, there's not like a lot of like, uh, like cars and shit. You just go to like well, escape. And okay, like, so I will say that what we have today that they didn't then. 
brave whistles? Yes, and panic <laughs> buttons. Um, yeah. And pepper spray. You know what? That joke wasn't as satisfying as I thought it would be. It's really <laughs> sad, really. I'm like, hey, maybe this will be funny. <laughs> I've been trying so hard to say funny things. It's not just, fucking working this episode. I just let you have it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thank you. So we're gonna oh, we're God. now going to get into uh, the extrajudicial killing of Chinese prisoners of war, which isn't something you're supposed to fucking do with prisoners of war. Prisoners no. of war means that, that you've taken them prisoner. You've taken them captive. And by doing so, have... Uh, by international law uh, agreed to keep them alive until the end of the war to trade off for your guys. But on August 5th, 1937, the deputy minister of of military of Japan uh, notified Japanese troops in Shanghai that the army had made a proposition to remove the constraints of international law on the treatment of Chinese prisoners. The directive also advised staff officers to no longer use the term prisoner of war. Soon after the fall of the city, uh, Japanese troops uh, had, they fucking fine-tooth combed the whole fucking place looking for Chinese soldiers and arrested thousands of young Chinese men. Uh, A lot of them were taken to the Yangtze River where they were machine-gunned to death. Uh, That was probably the the largest massacre of Chinese troops. Um, and probably the nicest that, thing they did to them. The, yeah, it, yeah, the easiest and quickest death. The Straw String uh, Gorge massacre occurred along the banks of the Yangtze River on December 18th. Uh, for most of the morning, Japanese soldiers tied the POW's hands together. Uh, at dusk, the soldiers divided them into four columns and opened fire. Uh, unable to escape, the POWs could only scream and thrash desperately. It took an hour for the sounds of death to stop, and even longer for the Japanese to bayonet each and every individual. Sure. The majority of the bodies were dumped just directly into the Yangtze River. Um, That's the gross. Japanese troops gathered 1,300 Chinese soldiers and civilians at Taiping Gate and just murdered them. Uh, 1,300 just, hey, come to this gate and stab, shoot. Uh, the victims were blown up with landmines. What? Then doused with, doused with gasoline and set on fire. Uh, and then the survivors of all that shit were killed with bayonets, even though if you survived that shit... You kind of deserve to... No, you're Superman. Yeah. <laughs> like, you are a fuck, yeah. you, you, you are from the planet Krypton. Fucking okay. oh. hey. There, there were two American news correspondents... Um, uh, F. Tillman Durden and Archibald Steele. Holy fuck. That's Archibald my porn name. Steel. Archibald <laughs> Steele. <laughs> no, I'm going to make it mine yeah, first, motherfucker. That, that's a good that one. Dude, that's, he was in the shit, and you know it, and he was like smoking a fucking corn cob pipe and like surfing the whole fucking time, too. <laughs> yeah, oh. So they reported seeing cor- corpses of the, uh, the massacred Chinese soldiers forming mounds six feet high at the Nanjing Yijiang Gate in the north. Durden, who worked for the New York Times, toured Nanjing before his departure from the city. He heard waves of machine gun fire and witnessed the Japanese soldiers gun down some 200 fucking, two fucking hundred Chinese within ten minutes. He would later state that he had seen tank guns used on bound soldiers. What soldiers was the that excuse had for that? surrendered soldiers for that fun. had surrendered and were tied up were then killed with tank guns the, the whole land because the japanese thing, at like, this time there's no reason they were able for to that. do what they wanted and this is what they wanted to do that's, there's that's no reason for it that's just what they felt See, like doing you know what's fucked up is is the 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 nanjing massacre is all of Unit 731 with no scientific purpose. Yeah, that's basically what what it sounds like. That's what's going on there. That's fucking insane. This is purely for evil. the laughs. This is evil. That's fucking evil. Yes. Yeah, it's just pure evil, man. There's no other way to like. If there Jeez. is, yeah, it's evil. It, it's a, it's a, yeah. Two days later, yeah. in his report. <laughs> 
to the New York Times, Durden had stated that the alleys and streets were filled with the dead, amongst them women and children. He stated, uh, it should be said that certain Japanese units exercised restraint and that certain Japanese officers tempered power with generosity and commission. But he also continued, the conduct of the Japanese army as a whole in Nanjing was a blot on the reputation of their country. And I mean, at a newsman in the 30s, you don't get harsher words than that. Right, right. <laughs> That's like being, fuck you, you stupid cunts. Whoa. Like, see? Right? With that's that's word. what people fucking said when they saw this in the newspaper. They were like, whoa, the C word. Yep. <laughs> they didn't say that, James. I was just trying to make you feel better. Um, Thanks. <laughs> you're welcome. It worked. Um, so, Ralph L. Phillips, who was a missionary, testified to the U.S. State Assembly Investigating Committee that he was forced to watch while the Japanese disemboweled a Chinese soldier and roasted his heart and liver and ate them. What? Bitch, what the fuck? We're Good. going into straight-up cannibalism? Bitch, what the fuck indeed. Um, hey, he was a missionary. He was on something. We don't need that. The boring oh, but so also well. most comfortable sexual position. No. <laughs> no? If you want real talk right now, man, like laying I, down on the side, like spooning and doing it, I mean, that's, that's okay. the best. I mean, it's so calm. You're still just I have a laying bad, down. But I have a bad lower back. You're still just chilling. But it's like, it's a lot of... Well, it's I'm, a lot I'm, of I'm, I'm sp- young movement. and sprightly. I, you are young and sprightly. You are full <laughs> of sprite. And it's... You I know, I need a cut back, Joe. I need to drink more water. Crazy. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> now, I don't know why I didn't talk about this part first and, and uh, do the bad parts after, but theft and arson <laughs> in the city uh, was uh, just... What you would think a bunch of raping, murdering monsters would do. Because why the fuck not at that point? (laughs) One third of the city was destroyed as a result of arson. One Oh my god. A third of this 2,500 square mile city. I was just about to reiterate. 2,500 square miles. Was destroyed because of arson. Because of setting fires for fun. A hundred miles across, dude. Man. That's like, that's like almost the size of Louisiana. <laughs> no cross. According to reports, Japanese troops torched newly built government buildings as well as the homes of many civilians. Of course. There was considerable destruction to areas outside the city walls as well. Uh, soldiers pillaged from poor and wealthy because fuck the poor. Right, guys? High five, high five, high five. Hand me my monocle, sir. <laughs> no, I'm monocle. really gonna request a high five and then leave yeah, me hanging I, on did it. High five sound bad on microphone. Wait, 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 wait. No, see, no. wait, no, we gotta. Ah, oh, god, <laughs> see, that's gonna hurt my ears when I fucking edit this. <laughs> <laughs> that is a big spike. Yeah, it is. <laughs> there. <Ooh>. Uh, <laughs> so, um, the lack of resistance from uh, any Chinese troops. Uh, or civilians in Nanjing meant that the Japanese were just free to divide up the stuff. They're like, hey, guys, I got all this stuff that wasn't mine a minute ago, but now it is no, totally it mine. No owner. Uh, you guys want some stuff? And people are like, fuck yeah, and they're like, dicks are hanging out, and they're jacking off to dead bodies while they're high-fiving each other, just like we did just now, James. Yeah. And then, <laughs> just like and they're like, oh, I'll take some of that <laughs> stuff, like and, then, and then the guy, and then the guy with the, with all the stuff that's now his that wasn't his just before is like, cool. And that... I got stuff. And then, like, people behind him on their knees with, like, little too many bayonet stab wounds to like uh, uh, not die shortly after are like my stuff and they're all like you mean my stuff and then bitch yeah that's it man I don't even have to finish the episode Dude, now. we just, I think we we just, just covered pretty it pretty well <laughs> I felt like I was there Melissa did you get chills I got chills <laughs> it's, it's cold outside I'm too, surprised though. you're still out here Melissa I'm surprised you're enduring this hmm. unless you're just tuning us out she's not listening yeah, she's no, Melissa's not listening to anything. I don't listen to anything. <laughs> you guys are all dicks, and I, I just, I'm so... That's me, baby. Man, I'm you? all dicks. Dicks. <laughs> You've just listened to another <laughs> riveting episode. No. Um, okay, so... Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, no Chinese resistance, basically. Um, and so they just took shit. This, uh, you know, they just—they took shits. Yes, and probably. <laughs> can you probably imagine how many double deckers too. they must have left in houses? <laughs> that was like, <laughs> like, hey, the, it's a nice house. I'm gonna take a shit in the tank. 
I wonder what it's like to shit in a place like that. <laughs> oh, man. Fucking on upper deckers floor, for or on their days. couch. <laughs> it's going to be great to do that. So in December, I would have shit on somebody's couch, honestly, just, just to do it. <laughs> that's the mildest thing happening in this city right now. Okay? That's what I'm saying. I, I'm, I, if that's the biggest you know atrocity what? I do during war, Amen. then I'm pretty happy. No, no. I shit on Dishonorable couch. discharge. <laughs> Which you is don't... what I call the shit on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are back, baby. <laughs> oh, the spikes, dude. The spikes classic, from my laugh. Classic. <laughs> Us. Nice. <laughs> nice. 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 Yay. That was pretty good. Okay. Okay. Even Melissa, like, laughed quietly <laughs> at that one. That was really, that was perfect, actually. Man. <sighs> okay, let's wrap it up, B. All right, are we ready? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the, now we're going to talk about uh, the Nan, the Nanjing uh, safety zone in particular, <laughs> and the role of foreigners in such safety zone. Because I have a feeling that uh, if if white people weren't there, we wouldn't know about this at all. Because uh. it would be part of Japan, and everybody would just be dead. Because white people be snitching them, all right? Yeah, man. Hell yeah. Uh, what happens in Nanking? No. Stays in your bayoneted new back vagina. Ugh. Unless there's a white person around. To yeah, unless it. there's a white person that's like, hey, they've been fucking back vaginas. <laughs> and they're like, real shit? <laughs> see, see, this, that was just, that was bad taste. Stays. See, so now Melissa's frowning. Look, she, okay. She's, she's like, she's a, look, she's like a, si- a silent applause we're, sign. We're, at a, at a we're deep enough into this that we can justify joking about it. It's pretty <laughs> obvious we're not taking this lightly. We're just breaking yeah. some tension. Melissa understands that. She gets it. She'll she'll be more upset with me that I said the word cunt earlier than she is about me reading any of this. And now you said it again. I know. It was a joke, baby. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. (laughs) Um, So, (laughs) Japanese troops did actually kind of respect the zone uh, until the Japanese occupation. No shells did blow up there. Uh, They did have a couple of, a few, like, stray shots, but honestly, stray shots. Uh, during the chaos uh, that followed the attack of the city, some were killed in the safety zone, but uh, but, but the crimes that really happened everywhere else were, uh, you know, more like, hey, we should probably document this. Um, the Japanese soldiers committed actions in the safety zone that were part of the larger Nanjing massacre. The International Committee appealed that a number of times to, uh, they appealed a number of times to the Japanese army with Rabe using his credentials as a Nazi party member to help try and save people. That that, that really is one of the most interesting <laughs> things that's ever been said on this show. Like, used his credentials <laughs> to help. Nazi party to the rescue. <laughs> Man, I... You, you and most of our longtime listeners know that I say, uh, on, on a daily basis, really... Fuck you, Nazis. Yeah, but Nazis, what you did was not very but cash holy money. F- the dude, this John Rob R- Rabe guy, like he's like, like he's you know maybe just like uh, he, he's a cut above the rest. Like let him die at old age, but like in like a dungeon somewhere. Like not don't make it nice for him, but like you know maybe <laughs> let's not him hang him, him. You know, like he still deserves to die sad, but maybe I'm, like let him hang out for a bit. I don't know, man. If, uh, I'm actually kind of sad Rob didn't get to hear this part. If there's a, if there's any Nazi I can forgive, it might be this guy. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 on one of our, our on our heroes episode where we were supposed to, <laughs> it was like a fucking school report. Uh, Rob asked us who our, our, our heroes were, and one of his was an honest to god Nazi. He, yeah. he he was like an actual good Nazi though. That <laughs> like uh, oh yeah, one of the good Nazis. Like, that's actually course, that is literally course. the name of the episode is. One of the good Nazis. <laughs> nope. Well, no here's bullshit. another. But mm. we're talking about Raven. I don't know, dude. I'd consider him a good Nazi. For the time being. Now, yeah, because yeah, we don't know anything else about him. I think we're going to call... Him. And then he's like... And then he transferred to Auschwitz. And <laughs> we're going to call him a, a night Auschwitz. Like, he's yeah. nice, but he's a Nazi, so he's a night A nice A nice night Nice. That's hard to say. That's that's not going to fly. <laughs> <laughs> We're American here. We yeah, already butchered. There were a lot of nights. There, there, there were. There, yes, they were all, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of really, actually, genuinely good people that happened to get sucked into the Nazi thing that continued 
to be very good people and help people while being uh, mostly under the guise of the Nazi party. But, uh, you know, for the most part, I think Germany saw themselves as a more civilized version of what Japan was doing. Well, the Chinese aren't Jewish. At least, they're like, I at mean, least we're in camps doing it. At least so they got that going for well, them. They're not. They're, they didn't even really They're just starving it. them to death. They don't want to have sex with them because they think they're lesser people and things like that. So there's not widespread rape. I'm sure there was rape. Um, at, there was. Okay, so by February 5th, 1938, uh, which I hazard, uh, I, I mean, I don't want to. I mean, I just, you know, my birthday's February 5th. And I usually bring that up. I'm like, hey, my birthday. But, like, I don't, <laughs> like. Why you, you always got to like be this... doing research on things that happened on your birthday, Jason? <laughs> Fuck. Man, February 5th, just some momentous <laughs> shit happens on it is all. is, I And mean, I can't help if it's good or bad. <laughs> you know? So, so by February 5th, 1938, the International Committee had forwarded to the Japanese embassy a total of 450 cases of murder, rape, and general disorder by Japanese soldiers Only especially that son of a bitch uh, general disorder man yeah, fuck him he's like the worst one yeah he was general making speaking. bad calls out there bad calls I know right who goes for it on fucking fourth and seven Jeez, fucking bad this calls. fucking guy <laughs> this guy um, so um, they they reported uh, all this stuff to them and um uh, son of a bitch. And these are cases that had uh, initially been reported after the American, British, and German diplomats returned back to their embassies because you couldn't really write about it and have it be delivered from Nanjing. You had to fucking witness it, leave, write about it, and send it because there's no fucking way the Japanese would let it out of Nanjing. Right, right. So <clears throat> it's, it, it, it's, it's crazy how much information's here. Mm-hmm. And then you realize how much more information there could have been. Yeah. Had more people survived. Like this mm-hmm. is this is a lot to go over. This is definitely a two parter. Because I mean, we're kind of late. Okay. We we are we're actually going to end it with with these uh, some of these cases real quick, real quick. Case five. On the night of December fourteenth, there were many cases of Japanese soldiers entering houses and raping women or taking them away. This created panic in the area, and hundreds of women moved into the Jinlin College campus yesterday. Case 10. On the night of December 15th, a number of Japanese soldiers entered the University of Nanjing buildings at Taoyuan and raped 30 women on the spot, some by six men. <sighs> Case Ooh. 13. De- December 18th, 4 p.m. at number 181, Holu, uh, Japanese soldiers wanted a man's cigarette case, and when he hesitated... One of the soldiers crashed in the side of his head with a bayonet. The man is now at the university hospital and is not expected to live. Case 14. On December 16th, seven girls, ages ranged from 16 to 21, were taken away from the military college. Five returned. The (laughs) military... Five returned. Each girl was raped six or seven times daily. Um, Reported (coughs) December 18th. (coughs) Case number 15. There are about 540 refugees crowded in number 83 and 85 on Canton Road. More than 30 women and girls have been raped. The women and children are crying all night. Conditions inside the compound are worse than we can describe. Please give us help. Case 16. A Chinese girl named uh, Lo, who with her mother and brother was living in one of the refugee centers in the refugee zone, was shot through the head and killed by a Japanese soldier. The girl was 14 years old. The incident occurred near the uh, Kuling Tsu, a noted temple on the border of the refugee refugee zone. Case 19, and this is the last. January 30th, about 5 p.m., Mr. Son of the Nanjing Theological Seminary was greeted by several hundred women pleading with him that they would not have to go home on February 4th. They said it was no use going home. They might just as well be killed for staying at the camp as to be raped, robbed, or killed at home. One old woman, 62 years old, uh, went home near Hans Hans Simen, and Japanese soldiers came at night and wanted to rape her. She said she was too old, so the soldiers rammed a stick up her. But she survived to come back. Good. In the end, 
It Rabe. said that that Rabe that Rabe uh, rescued between two hundred thousand and two hundred and fifty thousand Chinese people. Jesus Christ! So that <laughs> is where we will end this episode uh, this week. Um, but hey, join us next time uh, because uh, can things can it. only either get worse or better. Right? You get one of the two. They <laughs> definitely didn't stay the same. And uh, I, I, excuse are me. Are you done, Chris? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You are excuse. Son of a bitch. Um. Anyway. Uh. uh and that wasn't in the microphone. Far, uh. Just your ears. <laughs> if you have made it this far, thank you. Uh. It's it's probably hard to Man, want to listen to this. Gold we're stars for everybody that got to that could fucking sit through that. Yeah. Because I mean we're doing this because it's you know our our show we got to put out an episode that's we got not even no i i am genuinely no, no we're interested, interested in, in, this, in humans and like humanity's fucking the, catastrophic blunders mm-hmm. where we can see what it could possibly be like had people's mindsets been just a tiny bit different no obviously, obviously we're interested in it but i'm just saying yeah. congrats to you for wanting to listen to this episode and i hope you <laughs> stick for part two yeah god damn it bless you I'm just trying, and you're just really trying to see, just really trying to see to think in my head what I'm gonna call this fucking episode. Rape and Nanking Part One. Just keep it simple. I, Don't try to do no, no fancy wordplay. No, there's no. It's just I have to. I oh. I can't have. I, oh, the That's episode good, title's got to be something catchy. It's a good it's question. Gotta ha- you got to make have, the Rape of Nanking catchy. It's got to have a beat. You got to be able to dance to it. It's got to be a like. Mm. I'm not, gonna, I'm not. I was gonna be. I'm gonna. I'm gonna name it. Well, I'm gonna name it. It's a rape of nat nat nat. All right, Chris. Now, now we need your your beatbox title. Uh, I mean, I was ripping them up earlier, the but I got nothing now. The skills I, show them. Put me on the spot. I got nothing. I was just going to say, though, add to this that um, <clears throat> I, I had plans for after this, you know, but Pornhub's going to have to wait until tomorrow because you, you killed it for me, Jason. You just <laughs> wow! This is this is um, this is history here, folks, that we we're, we're witnessing for the first <laughs> time ever. Jason, through his topic subject, has actually made Chris. Not erect. <laughs> not on a jerk. You have off. killed his libido for the night. Yeah, he, he he can't even look at people that are all together, right? And not in pieces and impale and pleasure himself to sleep. Impale the penises me. versus bayonets. Yeah, no, that's not even gonna work for me. Man. All right, all right. Uh, no comment there. <laughs> Thanks everybody for listening to an episode. That's right, an episode. Suck a dick words that should go in between there because I'm too sad to fucking think of any of. Mm-hmm. See no, hear no, speak no. Them UFOs, them conspiracies, and them motherfucking murders. God damn, there's some murders this time. Whew. And that was and the I'm easy so- part. <laughs> <laughs> Countdown, motherfuckers. Three, two... Bye. 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 Bye.